Florida rakes delay power restoration for thousands after Irma or Florida's Gov protected power keeps thousands in the dark after Irma. Gov protected FPL, you'll learn what that means in a little bit here, is to blame for over 100,000 still being without power after Irma struck almost. I guess it's uh, almost two weeks ago. Hi, my name is Paul Gordon, and I am here for iState.tv's News Watch, and this is today's commentary. Hurricane Irma hit Florida September 10th, 2017. And as of the writing of this article, September 21st, 11 days after Irma struck, and uh, the article is the one that I wrote that I'm using for the basis of this video, which is also being created on September 21st. 11 days after Irma struck, more than 100,000 people are still without power. Now, if you're a state senator, however, you can be sure that you're you're not one of those 100,000 people. And we, we did a report on her, and uh, that video will be linked both in the description and the commentary below. Uh, if, if you're not one of the politicians that work hand-in-hand hand with Florida Power and Light, FPL, uh, to, to give it protected status, it needs to not place customers as a top priority. Well, <laughs> you just might be one of those 100,000 or so folks sitting in the dark at night and the 90-plus degree heat of the day. So those very politicians that can benefit from having a direct connection to the top leadership of Florida Power and Light are the same people that you can thank for slowing down the recovery time from Hurricane Irma. Do you know, I bet you don't know this, I bet you don't know this unless you live in Florida, and then even if you live in Florida, you might not know it. Do you know that it's illegal to power your home with solar, solar panels? If you're not connected to the central power grid, that's right. You can't just you you, you can't just go out off grid all willy nilly. You can't. As a matter of fact, it's illegal to go off grid in Florida, in the state of Florida, thanks to the government. I wonder why that is. So you might be asking, well, if if the power gets cut off from Florida and Power Light, you could just use your solar panels to power your home, right? So. You know, in the in the wake of Hurricane Irma, all the folks with solar panels, and there are a lot of them, they should be able to just power up their homes, right? No, 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 no. You see, people with solar panels are not allowed to use them uh, when, when the power goes out. Because in so doing, they might endanger the workers who are restoring power in their neighborhoods. Now, you just just think about the fact that the government has created regulations that prevent you from using power in your home because in so doing so, you know, during a power outage, because in so doing so, you may harm the workers. But the reason that you may harm the workers is because the government won't allow you to create a power source for yourself that is not connected to the central grid. There's absolutely no legitimate reason whatsoever to force people to connect their solar panels to the central grid. That regulation was pushed through with great and costly lobbying efforts by Florida Power and Light, FPL, the same company that refuses or that rushed to restore the power of a Florida state senator when she texted the vice president. Again, the video is, is linked in the description as well as the, the commentary below. Now, the only reason those regulations were passed was to protect FPL from the com competition of individual self-reliance and self-sustainability. I'm just going to say, by the way, maybe FPL should be re renamed uh, FFPL. I'll let you figure out what that means. So efforts, efforts to get Florida and power and light to build underground power lines were met with costly litigation, delaying the breaking of ground and beginning the process of building power lines underground. For, for years now. So in July of this year, the city of Miami voted to pay FPL $27 million to not 
build new power lines and leave existing underground power lines in place, at least for the next 40 years. That's right. Just take that in the city of Miami had to get together and pay off FPL to just maintain existing underground power lines. And uh, the story is linked in our original story on iState.tv. And that story is linked, of course, in the description and the, and the comments below. So my question is this. How much of Florida's power lines could be underground today if FPL wasn't busy blocking any effort to attempt to get it to start converting to underground power lines? Better question, how many smaller companies competing for customers would have found an incentive to make such moves in a state that has seen a regular diet of hurricanes, even tropical storms that regularly take down power lines and put people in the dark? Which leads us to our next point. So we're going to look at another reality in Florida, and that reality is called Monopoly. So is Florida Power and Light the only game in town because they offered the best service for the best price? <laughs> Not hardly, folks. FPL is an artificially created power monopoly, one created by special regulations and rules that politicians created. These are the same politicians who receive millions of dollars in campaign donations from the same company, FBL. And in times of stress where everybody else has lost power, these are the same politicians that can go ahead and contact FBL and get special treatment, even though they'll, they'll say it's not special treatment. And again, the, our video is linked. So the fact that Florida has only one power company means that innovation experimentation is all but dead in the sunshine state when it comes to public power as a matter of fact public power is mandated by the state essentially it also means that one company and one company alone must be the central planner for restoring power to millions of people so at one point nearly three quarters of floridians were without power Rather than having a few different companies serving smaller communities, companies that would have had a better understanding of the unique needs and circumstances of those local areas. What's more, if FPL follows the patterns of the past, customers can expect price increases after the hurricane. That's right, price increases. Thank you. Now you have to pay more, as well as additional storm fees to help pay for the extra cost of restoring Florida's power. There was, a, there was a, I think there was a recent lawsuit uh, filed against FPL because they, they, were, they were actually not using existing storm fees to actually use them the way that they were supposed to be used. They, they were probably uh, using them. Well, I'll get to the point here. Uh, Florida uh, can take these measures because it is a protected monopoly, one that spends... And this is the point here, and this is what happened with this other money, most likely. They spend far more money investing in lobbying the government than in storm preparedness. So FPRL writes these, these mega checks to powerful politicians, to people who can write the rules and regulations that give it protected monopoly status and assure that people don't get the crazy idea in their head that they could somehow go off grid and, and whoa, 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 not rely on FPL at all? Whoa, you can't have that. Got to have some regulations to, to keep our buddies. Uh, basically, uh, Florida Power and Light is essentially a coercive enterprise, and the, the, the muscle behind Florida Power and Light is the Florida state government that is controls uh, people with guns willing to uh, show up and, and enforce the regulations that protect FPL. So FPL promises its customers that they will have their power restored by Friday, September 22nd, but they make no promise to assure their customers that they will not continue to use their profits to pay off politicians to assure that at the end of the day, the safety and security of power for individuals in Florida takes a back seat to protecting your powerful, very rich ally, Florida Power and Light. I'm going to close this with this this comment without government 
who will force you to remain dependent on a central power source that is not reliable and has no great market incentive to change that reality. So this has been iState.tv's News Watch uh, commentary. I am Paul Gordon. And as usual, I got to remind you, if you like this video, if you like what we're doing, be sure that you like, share, comment, share with your friends, bring everybody to the party here. Everybody needs to come to the iState party. And uh, above all else, subscribe to the iState uh, YouTube channel right here, as you can see. And all you got to do is hit that subscribe button. And after you hit the subscribe button, you'll see a little bell off to the side here you want to hit that bell because then you get the latest notifications for when we do our latest videos i'm paul gordon with iState.tv i will see you i'll see you when i see you how about that